I could explain mathematics to my children in the same way that Brahma Gupta would have explained mathematics to his children. Some of us uh, learn with our eyes, some of us learn with our ears, um, some of us learn with our hands, our touch. And if numbers represent counts or measures of quantity or energy, the least number representing a quantity you can have is Shunya. Hello, my dear student. I'm Shweta Sharma, ECL Mathematics faculty. Uh, today, on account of National Mathematics Day, I have a very, very special guest for you. Here in this session, Mr. Jonathan Cabtree from Melbourne, Australia. He is with us. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Namaskar, Namaste, Namaskamaru, uh, wherever people may be in India. I know your welcomes are very, very different like all of your people. Um, I'm very honoured to be talking with you today. Uh, so guys, uh, Mr. Jonathan is a mathematician who is researching on Indian mathematics which is called Bharatiya Maths from last 37 years. So I would like to request Mr. Jonathan, sir, that please tell us about how you got interest in Bharatiya Maths and how Bharatiya Maths is different from Western Mathematics. Thank you for the question. Um, I first became interested in the problem of why mathematics is confusing in 1968 when I was a little boy age seven in class two. What I noticed when I was in class two was that Bharat's uh, zero, Bharat's Shunya, was missing from my teacher's explanation of mathematics. So later on, um, I decided in 1983, after noticing many confusing things about mathematics that we're told to follow rules without necessarily obeying the rule, uh, understanding the rules, we just obey the rules. We memorize formulas without understanding. In 1983, I set out to fix mathematics. The Vedic mathematics was great for giving me some interesting um, uh, uh, speed mathematics um, tricks, as they're often called, unfortunately, perhaps. But I really wanted to understand how it really worked. Like I wanted to, to pull mathematics apart as if I was a, an engineer and understand all of the bricks and the foundations and how it all fitted together. And I didn't ever have that. So I set out in 1983 um, to try and come up with an explanation of mathematics that would make sense to a child in class two. So although I've become an old man in the meantime, my goal has always been to be able to explain maths to young children in a way that they will intuitively understand as if, oh, well, that's simple. That's common sense. I understand that. And so the Bhatia mathematics, I, I kind of came back to the mathematics of India. And along the way, after starting off with Vedic mathematics in 1983, I also explored mathematics in ancient Greek, Sanskrit, Arabic, French, German, Italian, Russian, Dutch, Czech, Spanish, around about 19 different languages. But about six years ago, I, I, I really started to focus on the mathematics of Aryabhata, uh, Brahmagupta and, um, and Bhaskara the first. And I kind of, I mean, people had translated their shlokas many times. And people uh, knew about, for example, the laws of sign of Brahma Gupta. But nobody had really taken a very simple bird's eye view of mathematics to say, what's the big idea of Brahma Gupta? What's the biggest idea of Aryabhata? What's the biggest idea of Bhaskara? And what I've done is I've simplified 
the ingredients of Indian mathematics. So now it's almost like I feel I could explain mathematics to my children in the same way that Brahma Gupta would have explained mathematics to his children. How is Bhatia mathematics different? Well, the mathematics that's taught all around the world is based on a Western um, understanding of mathematics that came to us via the ancient Greeks. So in particular, you would have heard of, of names like Euclid and Pythagoras and, and Thales and so on. And in the Renaissance in Europe, they started to rediscover the, the mathematics of the ancient Greeks. And what happened is they took, for example, in particular, book seven of Euclid's elements as the, as the, as the kind of the Western Bible of arithmetic, because book seven of Euclid's elements was an explanation of arithmetic number theory as line segments. So it didn't have any numbers in it, this book of Euclid, but it was about the geometry of line segments, um, which we would measure today with a ruler. Um, but what happened is the, the ancient Greeks didn't have any concept of zero. They didn't have the number one as a unit. So they had no zero as a number. They had no one as a number and they had no negative numbers either. And yet that's what Europe and then England took as the foundation of mathematics. And they developed all of their explanations of mathematics without zero, without the number one, without the concepts of positives and negatives being balanced in symmetry. And that became the way that the British Empire began to spread its mathematics to all of its settlements and colonies around the world. And this is hundreds of years before the writings of Aryabhata and Bhaskara and Brahmagupta had been translated into the English language. I first met an Indian professor of mathematics in Hungary, um, strangely enough. And I was speaking at a conference on mathematics in Hungary and this uh, Indian uh, Dr. Esa Santanam said he didn't, under he didn't know about this Indian mathematics and he invited me to tour India. So that's, that was my first tour of India and uh, you met me on my third tour of India um, at Isa in Pune. Right, absolutely. Uh, so guys, uh, my dear students, as we discussed and Mr. Jonathan gave us so many knowledge about our Indian ancient mathematics, uh, I just want to say that this is a journey of 500 before years. It's like uh, we can say Shunya to Anant, zero to infinity. So I just want to ask Mr. Jonathan because he did he gave his life 37, 38 years for Indian mathematics. All the students should be aware of these Brahma Gupta journey, Aryabhatta's and Bhaskara Rai's life journey. Sir, can you tell me, could you please tell me how can we introduce Indian ancient mathematics concept in Indian curriculum at primary school? Well, I'm um, hoping that uh, Narendra Modi and all of the ministers in the uh, Ministry of Education uh, will watch this video that you're helping me with, uh, Shweta. Um, it's, it's really a case that I'm talking about the ideas of these ancient rishis, but what I'm wanting to do is to convert them into cartoons for children and games and songs for children. So what I'm not going to be doing is focusing on a lot of dry text from the Sanskrit. What we need to do is to entertain children and make the ideas fun. So 
the the fun and games really is all about putting aside the concept of number it's not about the words it's not about the symbols it's about the play so but let me give you a quick example of a game about selling bricks you know houses are made from bricks and imagine that the the the, the, the bricks are made of clay so imagine a child is a builder and the child has a spade and a bucket that's all they've got and the bucket has square sides to it now the child can dig up the clay and put it into the bucket and fill up the bucket and then turn the bucket upside down and the sun will dry the clay and make a brick okay so that's how we might imagine a brick is made we just dig a hole in the ground fill up our bucket and the sun will dry that cube shaped brick of clay into a brick so imagine a child in class one is going to play a game they're going to sell bricks to another child and the child who's the brick seller has two bricks for sale okay but what what if the child comes along and says i want to buy five bricks oh no <laughs> the child wants to buy five bricks but the seller only has two bricks so what will the child do the child will dig a hole and fill up the bucket and make a brick and the child will dig three holes to make three bricks okay so the child then has the two bricks at the start plus the three bricks that she just made so she's got five bricks now and she sells them okay and everyone's happy but guess what the child now has three holes okay so that's a kind of a game that children can just look at bricks and holes and and imagine digging with a bucket and a spade and if we let a brick be like one positive and one hole being like one negative then we start off with ground level zero and one brick goes up one and the hole goes down one but if we put the brick in the hole we get back to ground level zero so we can have bricks be positives and holes be negatives and we can get children an understanding of adding and subtracting bricks and making bricks and selling bricks and buying bricks and before you know it we can then say well let's count how many bricks we've got and they haven't they haven't been writing numbers yet they haven't been drawing symbols they've just been playing a game and role playing these little ha uh, happy harappan valley brick seller games the least amount of energy you can have is zero and if numbers represent counts or measures of quantity or energy the least number representing a quantity you can have is shunya and so negative numbers are not less than zero that's the mistake that came in from europe so let me leave you with that thought and in a little while i'll share some slides with you and and i look forward to uh, perhaps maybe later on after the video some questions from um, the people who watch this but it's an exciting journey to realize that many of the confusions that you've had are not the confusions they're not your problem they're not your weakness they're not your stupidity or your lack of intelligence if you were ever confused by mathematics you were probably right to be confused because the structural foundations from the west and the british empire in particular are wrong so thank you for watching uh, thank you Shveta and also to Israel. Um, you've given me a wonderful privilege on National Mathematics Day. 
I wish you all the very best of success in your futures. This, this is our honor, sir. You came to address our student on National Mathematics Day. Happy, happy National Mathematics Day to all of my students. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you.